Hello, I'm Justin Burke, director of the Institute for Advanced Dialectical Research, and this is a proud moment for our young institute, not even two years old yet, because we're announcing today the creation of a significant new award, the Dialectic Medal, a prize to be awarded not only for achievements in philosophy, but also in psychology and anthropology, biology, physics, medicine, computer science, civil rights, human rights, and so many other important fields, because that is the scope of dialectic. And that's why the Institute has created this award, not only to recognize and honor dialectical thinking, but especially to encourage and to foster it in diverse fields of theory and practice worldwide. Modern dialectic originated in the early 19th century in the phenomenology and logic of the German philosopher Hegel, and for our first award, we haven't strayed far from that origin because it is my privilege as director to announce that the Institute's inaugural Dialectic Medal has been awarded to another historic figure of German philosophy, Jürgen Habermas. Born in 1929 in Dusseldorf, Professor Habermas originally envisioned himself as a medical doctor, but he went on, of course, to become a doctor of philosophy instead, doing his doctoral research on the philosopher Schelling, who had been close friends with Hegel during their student days together. After completing his research, though, Habermas left philosophy behind to begin a career in journalism. But a couple of years later, after publishing his first major critical essay, The Dialectics of Rationalization, he became a research assistant to another famous German philosopher, Theodor Adorno, at the Institute for Social Research, the famous Frankfurt School. This seems to have given him a renewed taste for academic life because he left Frankfurt after a few years to begin his habilitation at Marburg, which is a process similar to completing a second doctorate that is required in Germany in order to qualify to teach. And in this case, it was a double success, not only enabling Dr. Habermas to become Professor Habermas at the University of Heidelberg, where Hegel himself had been a professor, but also resulting in the publication of his first book, The Structural Transformation of the Public Sphere which, appropriately enough, includes a chapter on Hegel and Marx called Dialectic of the Public Sphere. And, as a new professor, the subject he chose for his inaugural lecture was also Hegel, Hegel and the French Revolution. A few years later, following the retirement of Max Horkheimer, the longtime director of the Institute for Social Research, Habermas succeeded him as professor of philosophy and sociology at the Goethe University of Frankfurt. Now, speaking of Horkheimer, who, along with Adorno, co-authored the famous book, Dialectic of Enlightenment, I think my favorite thing that I learned about Jürgen Habermas in preparing to present this award today was that in a letter from Horkheimer to Adorno, so we have this in writing, Horkheimer refers in the letter to Habermas as the dialectical Mr. H, which may not have been meant as a compliment at the time, but it is, I think, a fitting comment to consider all these years later as we are presenting the dialectic medal to the dialectical Mr. H. Following his appointment in Frankfurt, Habermas had many visiting professorships here in the United States and elsewhere, but in the 1970s, he was lured away from university life to become director of the Max Planck Institute, one of the many Planck Institutes, I should say, because there are dozens of them, in fact, and this one, which no longer exists, had what I assume was the longest name of any of them, because it was called the Max Planck Institute for the Study of Living Conditions in the Scientific and the Technical World. And Habermas remained there as director until 1981, which saw the publication of his most influential work, The Theory of Communicative Action. This brought about his return to Goethe University, where he remained until his official retirement in 1994. I say official because retirement doesn't seem to have slowed Habermas down much, as many more conferences, lectures, papers, and books followed, including a dialogue with the former Archbishop of Munich, Cardinal Josef Ratzinger, who shortly afterwards was elected Pope Benedict. And their exchange was published under the title of The Dialectics of Secularization. Earlier, I mentioned that Horkheimer had called the young Habermas the dialectical Mr. H, and since then, he's been called many other things, including Germany's greatest living philosopher, one of the last great public intellectuals, one of the most influential continental philosophers of the post-war era, and so on. All of which, of course, make him sound like something of a relic, a figure from a former time, a thinker of the last century. But don't be fooled by Habermas's longevity, because just a few years ago, at the age of 90, he published his longest book to date, Auch eine Geschichte der Philosophie, 
which has not been translated into English yet, and the title is kind of an odd formulation in German, which in English would be something like also a history of philosophy. But I guess we'll have to wait and see what they call it when eventually it does come out in English, which hopefully will be soon. My point, however, is that with this most recent book approaching 2,000 pages, we can see that Professor Habermas has obviously been keeping busy. And as with all his works, dialectic remains a continuing theme running throughout it. Prior to this magnum opus, as I've already mentioned, there were countless other books, lectures, and essays that, speaking of English, have been translated into more than 40 languages. And for all this work, he's received many honorary degrees and many, many awards. Prizes named for Adorno, Erasmus, Frankel, Freud, Jaspers, and Leibniz, just to name a few. Awards seemingly as countless as his many publications. In fact, from reading his biography, it seems like there was a period in his life when being honored was practically a full-time job. And interestingly, the first major award that he received nearly 50 years ago was the Hegel Prize from the city of Stuttgart, where Hegel was born. And this, in an almost Hegelianly circular way, brings us back to the Institute's award, the Dialectic Medal, which, as you may be able to see here beside me, features a portrait of Hegel. And there are actually two reasons why Hegel appears on this medal. The first I have already mentioned, which is that dialectical thinking begins with Hegel, who did not invent the word. Dialectic has existed since ancient times, and like a lot of words in philosophy, it has a Greek origin, dialectikos, which at that time were related to dialogue, to discourse, discussion, debate. But what it lacked was the necessary element of contradiction of self-negation that Hegel brought out in his phenomenology and later in his logic in the early 19th century. In fact, the 20th century Frankfurt School philosopher Herbert Marcuse, who Mar Habermas knew and admired, Marcuse described dialectic as the power of negative thinking, which is a phrase I love because it's not only an accurate description of how dialectic works, but I assume it's also Marcuse having a little fun in alluding to the title of the popular self-help book, the Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale that a lot of people were reading at the time, though it is hard to imagine Marcuse reading that book. Now, the second reason that Hegel is pictured on this medal is that a medal very much like this one was given to Hegel himself by his students. This was in the year 1830, when Hegel was elected rector of the University of Berlin, and his students had a gold medal struck to commemorate this honor. Hegel was very touched by this gesture, and he sent a bronze copy of the medal to his sister in Stuttgart, telling her, I have not only been engraved and sculpted, but now stamped on a medal as well. He also sent one to his friend Goethe, who was not only a famous poet and, and of course, many other things, Goethe also collected many things, including medals. In fact, he had a collection of around 2,000 medals, so he was obviously something of a connoisseur of this art form, which makes it all the more meaningful that after receiving Hegel's gift, he wrote to a mutual friend that the praiseworthy profile of the medal has turned out very well in every respect which is what we've reproduced here. And this medal that Goethe is talking about, which he received from Hegel, still exists today, nearly 200 years later, in the collection of the National Goethe Museum in Weimar. And it was with their generous cooperation that this particular medal served as the model for the Institute's Dialectic Medal, which, like the original, was also struck in Berlin. The backside of the medal displays the name and emblem of the Institute, which is surmounted by the Owl of Minerva, which actually appeared on the back of the original medal, so we have retained the owl, but then down below is inscribed the motto of the Institute in Latin, which translates as contradiction is the rule of the true, which actually relates to something I said earlier. Two things, really, the first being about the central role of contradiction in dialectic, which is expressed in the motto, and the second is the source of that motto, which was Hegel's own habilitation. In 1801, in order to qualify to teach at the University of Jena, his first academic job, Hegel, like Habermas, had to habilitate, which required him to write a dissertation and submit to a public examination. This was Hegel's notorious dissertation on the planets, if you're familiar with his early career. And since he realized that the dissertation wouldn't be ready in time to be examined so that he could start lecturing at the beginning of the fall term, he made a deal with the philosophy faculty. He said he'd hand in the dissertation at a later date, and in the meantime, he would submit to a public examination on the basis of 12 
philosophical theses, and it's Hegel's first thesis that became the Institute's motto. Now, we're actually using only the first part of that first thesis, contradiction is the rule of the true, to which Hegel added the negative rejoinder, non-contradiction is the rule of the false, which I think is actually the more interesting and provocative component of that construction because, more controversially, it takes aim directly at the so-called law of non-contradiction and declares it to be false. Uh, that, however, is, of course, a matter for another time. Returning to the recipient of this medal, when I contacted Professor Habermas to inform him that we had chosen to award the first one to him, he told me he was surprised. Not surprised to hear he was receiving another award, of course. That's obviously something he's quite familiar with. Instead, he told me he was surprised to be receiving it from an institution he had never heard of before. This institution, the Institute for Advanced Dialectical Research, which of course makes perfect sense, I told him, because we had only recently been established and he would be receiving our very first medal. This was last year, by the way, in 2021. And you may have noticed that the diploma is actually dated a year before that, in 2020. That's because the Institute was founded that year during the pandemic, which slowed down many of our plans, including our first award, which was also established in 2020. Again, for two reasons. First, to commemorate the founding of the Institute, which took place that year on World Philosophy Day in November 2020, and also to mark the 250th anniversary of Hegel's birth. It's just taken this long to get everything together in order to be able to make this presentation. So hopefully that explains certain discrepancies in the timeline, because the diploma is actually dated June 18th, 2022, which is Professor Habermas's 93rd birthday. But the award itself is for the year 2020, and it's going to someone who's obviously used to receiving many awards, so we thank him for still being open to accepting them, at least on a part-time basis, and we hope in the future to be presenting many awards. We hope that this will be the first in a long and significant succession of dialectic medals, an award that in the future will be more meaningful and more esteemed by having begun in this way with the very first one going to the dialectical Mr. H. So thank you for your work, Professor. Congratulations on this award and best wishes on your 93rd birthday. We wish you many more.